Next up uh, is a discussion of strong acids and bases. So far we've been focusing on weak species which require equilibrium problems. We're going to go over a way to identify strong acids and bases and essentially it's going to be a bit of memorization but once you do the things that I want you to be attaching in your mind to strong acid and base behavior is that they are not going to be involved in ice type problems. They're stronger than weak acids. We do limiting reactant type problems that utilize mole to mole relationships just like you did last semester. The K's are so big that the product side is so favored that instead of thinking about a double arrow and doing an equilibrium problem, it's a full arrow to the product side. So whenever we see a strong species, we really treat it just like we did any reaction last semester. It's gonna be such a good approximation, just pretend that everything just goes to the product side, that that's the approximation that we use. For example, if I have an acid now that is going to be a strong acid, right? What we do is we say it completely breaks down in water, all right? It goes completely in one direction with no possibility to come back to the product side. And we generate hydronium that we're approximating or kind of simplifying with an H plus. And we still get out a conjugate base. But notice the difference here. Notice the chemistry that's different. It's a complete arrow to this side. You're generating H plus in the form of hydronium, right? You're going in that direction completely. So let's take a look at then how we do problems associated with calculating pH for these and how we identify strong acids and bases even to start with. So let's start with strong acids. It's just a list that you have to memorize. All right. And so the list looks like this, all right. The strong acid list, and they won't have a Ka. So the other thing that you'll see in problems is there'll be no Ka given because it's just so big that there's no Ka that's possible to even like quantify in a, in a reasonable way for us to use on this level of chemistry. So there's no Ka given and it's going to be one of these species. It's going to be H2SO4, the first H+. plus. All right, and we'll talk about polyprotic species next week, but we're still going to include this in our list. HCl, HNO3, HClO4, perchloric acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, HBr, and hydroiodic acid, HI. Those are our list <coughs> of strong acids. Now, as I wrote in the previous page, if we just take like perchloric acid, for example, HClO4, all right? HClO4 is going to react with H2O. Because it's a strong acid, it just goes fully to the right-hand side. You generate hydronium. And then the conjugate you find in the same way you found a conjugate before, you remove an H+, and whatever you're left with is the conjugate base. This we simplify down, okay? So this is definitely what happens chemistry-wise. This is still donating an H here. But because it's only like a one-directional thing, and because we get lazy with it, you'll see this expressed as, oh, this strong species, all it really does is it dissociates into an H plus and a ClO4. So it's kind of like those dissociation problems we were doing, doing early in the semester. And when is that appropriate? only when we have strong acids. Remember this thing we mentioned before, I'm just gonna mention it again, H plus and H3O plus, those are synonymous species. H plus is a, a simplification of H3O plus, it's a lazy way of writing it. So just memorize these, and then you're not doing ice tables, there's no Ks given. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do a complete dissociation. So for example, what if we're asked to calculate the pH of a 0 0.025 molar HCl solution? So what is that pH? Well, you still do your identification steps. You look here and you say, what kind of species is this? Is it an acid or a base? Well, it starts with an H, all right? So I know it's an acid. Oh, and I also know it's one of my strong acids 
that I've memorized. And as soon as you identify it as one of your strong assets, you're not going to write a nice table. You're not going to do a calculation with a K. All right. You treat it like a dissociation. The HCL is going to break down completely into H plus and the conjugate base CL minus. Notice we're using a single arrow here. So here is a one to one relationship in the actual breakdown between HCL and H plus. So if I have 0 0.025 molar HCL, this one to one ratio tells me that in this strong solution, I have 0 0.025 molar H plus. Remember that that's the same as 0 0.025 molar H3O plus. So right away, it's a lot more simple of a problem. We can jump right to pH. pH is gonna be the negative log of this concentration, 0 0.025. And when I put this into my calculator, what I get is that the pH, two significant figures here, so we're gonna use two decimal places, looks like 1.60. So a lot more simple process based off that recognition that it's a strong species, okay? Does this pH make sense for an acid? Yes, it's less than seven, right? That pH definitely does make sense. What about strong bases? It's the same idea. When we're talking about strong bases, a full dissociation happens. There's not going to be a KB. The KB is too big, it won't be given in the problem, it's not usable, right? Your list of strong bases, the ones that you have to memorize, are group 1A metal hydroxides. So you have to look at the periodic table. So group 1A metal hydroxides. And group 2A metal hydroxides, but only on the periodic table for calcium and down, right? It's all about finding metal hydroxides, but they have to be really soluble metal hydroxides when they actually get dissolved in water. They have to break down completely. Group 1A metals, we know where they exist on the periodic table. They're in that first column. Group 2A metal hydroxides are in the second column, all right? But you ignore the ones except for calcium and lower. All right, calcium and lower. So calcium hydroxide, all right, would be a strong base. Potassium hydroxide, ooh, we wouldn't put a parentheses there. Potassium hydroxide would also be a strong base. So it's all about finding these hydroxides. Ca uh, uh, potassium is a group 1A metal, it's attached to a hydroxide. It's a group 1A metal hydroxide. Here's a group 2A metal hydroxide, all right? Is it part of the group that's calcium and lower? Yes, it is, so it's a strong base. These will undergo full dissociations. To drive that point home, one last example. All right, what's the pH of a 0 0.050 molar barium hydroxide solution? Right. What's the pH of a 0.050 molar barium hydroxide solution? So I look at it. I'm not given a KB, so I start thinking, huh, is that one of my strong bases? I look here. Barium is a group 2A metal. It's below calcium, so definitely this is a strong base. Okay. So I know a full dissociation occurs. Barium hydroxide breaks down like a dissolution problem in one direction completely in water and it breaks into a ba plus two o and two oh minuses so now i see it's not a simple one-to-one -one relationship here but i know how to use mole to mole relationships for my information in uh, the first semester chemistry course i had so what i'm going to do is if i want a ph i'm going to get a poh and then from there i'll go <coughs> excuse me and then from there i'll get a ph so i need oh minus concentration i have 0 
moles of BaOH2 in one liter of solution. Based off of my dissolution, there's two moles of OH minus for every one mole of BaOH2. So that means, oh, the liters is gonna stay in the bottom. I'm gonna multiply this by two. What I have in solution is 0 0.10 molar OH minus, okay? So it's just a simple mole to mole relationship that then tells me how much OH minus is produced. And this makes sense. I get double the OH minus because every one of these produces two OH minus. So this is the concentration of OH minus. So what we can do is we can get a pOH from this. So if I take the negative log of an OH minus concentration, all right, what I'm gonna get is pOH. And in this instance, and you can check my math as always, what I get is 1.00 to the correct number of significant figures. To finish the problem then, my pH is 14.00 minus 1.00. My pH is 13.00. We decided from the start of this problem that we had a base. Does a pH of 13.00 make sense for a base? And the answer is yes, right? Because the pH is greater than seven for bases. So that answer makes sense. So for strong species, they're full dissociations, they're full reactions, they go completely to the right side. You can use your mole to mole relationships. It's like a dissolution problem. You're not doing ice tables for strong species.